Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pooja and if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you're returning, thanks so much for coming back and thank you everyone for just being um, at this video today and watching. Um, so I hope everyone is having a wonderful holiday season regardless of which holidays you're uh, celebrating or not celebrating. And for those of you for whom the holidays are not such a happy time, I hope you're hanging in there. 2020 is almost over. It's very exciting. We're almost at 2021. And I know it's not like an arbitrary thing that's going to change all of the nonsense that's happening in the world right now, but hopefully things are going to be getting better soon. And I hope we can all be hopeful about that and be excited about what the future is going to bring. So today's video is going to be expanding a little bit more on my 2021 reading goals. Now, I've talked a little bit about my 2021 goals in my past couple of videos, but I haven't really gone into too much detail about them and just have kind of offhandedly mentioned them. So I thought it might be helpful for both you guys and just for me to talk about them in a little more detail so that you guys have a little bit more understanding of why I chose the goals that I did and what I intend to do about them and so that I also have a more specific roadmap that I can follow as I'm trying to achieve these goals in 2021. So there's gonna be two of these videos because I think two of my goals are a bit more interesting than the other ones. And so today's video is going to be focused on why and how I plan to read more classics in 2021. And then the next video that I post will be more focused on memoirs by artists that I wanna read and why and how I'm going to be reading those. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it, all about the classics. Um, I think the right place to start this video is kind of why I don't currently read that many classics. So if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that many of the books that I talk about or recommend tend to be either contemporary fiction, a little bit of sci-fi and fantasy sprinkled in there, and then a lot of nonfiction and like memoirs and history and stuff like that. So that's kind of where my reading currently is. And I don't read a ton of classics or pretty much any books that were published more than like 50-ish years ago. I just kind of stay away from. And the reason for that is honestly can be traced back to like middle school and high school. Now, I had some amazing teachers in middle school and high school for English. They were all super passionate about reading and the subject and just language as an art. Um, and I'm really thankful that I got to learn from those people and, and be taught by those people. However, I felt that the curricula that we were generally assigned in middle school and high school tended to be definitely not to my liking. And in retrospect now as kind of a an adult, um, I think a bit detrimental to many students' development. And there's two reasons for this. One, I found that all the books that we were assigned that were kind of in that classics bucket were really depressing. And this is honestly maybe many books that become classics uh, tend to delve into negative emotions because those tend to be more complex than just being happy or excited or in love or something like that. Um, and so I think those books tend to become classics. However, I feel like in a time when you're already going through a ton of emotional tumult, um, as a teenager, I feel like everyone is going through a lot and you feel like you're alone and have no one to talk to. And it's just, it's just a very difficult, emotionally troubling time. And then while you're going through that, to read The Scarlet Letter, followed by Lord of the Flies, followed by Heart of Darkness, followed by Animal Farm, it's just not healthy for a human being. And that's why I think many high schoolers just kind of turn away from these books, even if they ordinarily would have enjoyed them, because they're just so depressing and will just end up spark, no spark noting or cliff notes or whatever, um, and just kind of skimming through the books and not really understanding them, but just doing what they need to do to get the grade. Um, so I feel like one, that was an issue with just reading all these books at such a time that was already just so emotionally tumultuous. The second piece of it was the language was just harder to understand than a contemporary novel. It required a lot more attention, a lot more deep thought and reflection as you were reading the books and, and just kind of analyzing what the language was trying to say. And I think at that time, you know, you're just so like uh, inundated with so much other things, so many other things that you have to do for school and just thinking about college and the future and like just other things with friends and stuff like that, that it's hard to just kind of sit down and have an assignment of reading 200 pages in a night and there are pages that you have to really focus on to read amongst all the other things that you also have to do. So I think for those two reasons, I, like many other students, was just kind of put off by classics at that time. And 
I just developed this sort of negative disposition towards them and then just never really got back into them and just kind of stayed away from them. However, now I'm 23 and a half years old, I'm over a year out of college, I'm a much different, more mature person than I was in high school, and I feel like I now do have both the linguistic and emotional capability and capacity to actually appreciate some of the themes in these books and actually uh, learn from them. And, and, and I know that there's a ton of value in a lot of classic literature, so I do want to appreciate that and not shy away from it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of why I haven't read many classics before. Um, however, I do want to make a concerted effort to do that in 2021. So let me now jump into kind of what types of classics I'm looking to read and some examples of things that might show up on my TBR. Now, what I'm about to list here are not books that I'm like definitely going to read or are not on my TBR as of now. Um, well, a couple of them are, but we'll get into that. But um, all of these books are just not like something I'm definitely going to read, but these are just ideas that I have to try to achieve some of the more specific pieces of this overarching goal of reading more classics. So there's kind of a three-pronged approach I'm going to take to this. One, I definitely want to read a lot of books by feminist classic literary heroines, um, is what I would call them. And so, of course, this includes people like Jane Austen, the Bronte sisters, Emily Dickinson, etc., etc. Um, these are all women who have written about a being a woman and what that experience is like. And what I've heard that really kind of um, drove it home for me was that a lot of these books that they've written kind of provide a take on a very different era than today, but the themes that they talk about and the experiences that women had to go through are not that different, just in a different setting than what they are today. Um, and that there's a lot of that you can learn as a woman in modern in the modern world um, from the experiences of the characters in the books written by these women. So I think that it'll be really exciting for me to kind of go on that journey, read some of their books, and actually kind of take those lessons and think about them in the context of my own life. So some of the books that I'm excited about are Pride and Prejudice. I've heard very, very good things from a lot of my friends, and I actually want to watch the movie as well. I've heard good things about that too. Um, so I definitely want to do that. I also saw Persuasion actually at the library the other day, and so I'm going to pick that up um, and hopefully take a look at that. Um, definitely have heard great things about Wuthering Heights. Um, so all of these books are ones that are floating around in my head, and we'll see which ones I actually end up picking up. So that's kind of one category that I'm looking to do. The second piece is I definitely want to delve into some of the Russian classic authors. I've heard really great things about Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, Bulgakov. I actually have a copy of The Master and Margarita that I want to get into as part of my Around the World in 80 Books um, journey, challenge, whatever you want to call it, and that will probably be my Russia book that I read for that. Um, I've heard great things about all of these uh, Russian authors, but I have heard that they're kind of difficult books to read, so I definitely want to try to take the time to properly sit through them, read them, put the attention that I need to put into them and kind of learn what I can learn from them. Don't know if I'll pick up a tome like War and Peace, but I think The Master and Margarita is probably a good place to start. I've heard it's a really great commentary on, um, you know, Leninist Russia and Stalinist Russia and kind of was banned there. And I don't know too many more details about that, but there's like some religious imagery and stuff like that. So I think it'll be just a really interesting take. And I think um, a lot of really interesting thinking has come out of Russian novelists, so I think that'll be really exciting. So I definitely want to delve into some of those books um, and, and kind of devote the attention that I need to devote to actually gain something and gain a lot of value from them. And then the third category that I want to explore a little bit more is just kind of going back to some of the books that I definitely skimmed over. I'm sorry to my teachers in high school, um, but the books that we were assigned for school, so I have copies of them already on my bookshelves, but that I never truly put the right amount of attention into, never truly read the entire thing and spent the requisite time to sort of understand the themes in the book and engage with them. Um, so definitely want to go back to some of those books and sort of reread them. I haven't really thought about specifically which ones. Um, something like Lord of the Flies. I recently read a book called Humankind, A Hopeful History uh, by Rutger Bregman, which kind of delves into this premise of why we think humans are just bad at their core and actually humans might really be good. 
Um, and he kind of takes the Lord of the Flies and dissects that and how it's kind of played a role in how we think about humanity as a collective society. Um, so I'm actually looking forward to maybe picking up Lord of the Flies and thinking about that in the context of this nonfiction book that I just read um, and just sort of engaging with it more deeply than I did when it was assigned as a mandatory reading book in like 10th grade or something. Um, so definitely excited to pick up some of those books. So yeah, that's kind of it for, for this video. Um, those are some of the reasons why I don't currently read that many classics, but why I think I will enjoy reading some of them in the future and some of the specific classics and types of classics that I'm hoping to pick up. Um, I've just seen so many rave reviews about many of these classic books on booktube and that's kind of also been a reason that my excitement about them has been a bit reignited um, or maybe reignited for the first time. Um, seeing a lot of these people that I admire and who also enjoy contemporary literature talking about classics and talking about how much they've gotten out of them I think has made me feel like, oh, I can, you know, love contemporary novels and love nonfiction and all these other things, but I can also still gain a lot from classics too. So thank you to BookTube for that. And I hope to share this journey with you all coming into the new year and I'm super excited about it. So thank you so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any recommendations of classics that I should check out. Um, I would love to know your opinions. And like I said, there will be a part two of this 2021 reading goals video where I talk more about some memoirs that I'm excited about reading in 2021. Um, and yeah, until then, have a wonderful holiday if you're off and celebrating and if you're working or if you're not celebrating. I hope things are going well for you as well. I'm very excited for the new year that's almost here and very excited for all that it holds for my reading and for this channel and just in life in general. It's just a very positive attitude that I'm trying to take into the new year. Um, so with that being said, thank you again so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.